My name is Michael James. I'm an application engineer at Man and Machine. And in this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the Enscape features and functionality when used with Autodesk Revit. Enscape is a live renderer and virtual reality plugin, which is supported by software such as Rhino, Archicad, SketchUp, and Autodesk Revit. So once you've installed the Enscape plugin, it will appear on the Revit interface as an additional tab. And on this tab, you'll notice we have some options and tools available to help us extract and customize visuals from within our Enscape environment. To start the Enscape application, we can go to the Enscape tab and find the start button on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the application. So once started, I'll be taken to a loading screen, which is fully customizable in the way that we can customize the loading background the Enscape logo, the window caption text, and also the window icon. We do the general settings under customization. Okay. So I'm just going to bring back that loaded screen. And as that loads, again, I'll mention the fact that Enscape is a live renderer. So any changes we make in our Revit model will take effect almost instantly within Enscape. So once that's loaded, I'll just wait a few seconds for it to iterate the image. And you'll notice it will gradually improve as the image iterates. It will add shadows and contrast to the image to improve the uh, quality. Okay, so now that's loaded, I just wanted to mention the fact that Enscape works really well as a design tool in the way that we can make alterations in our models and those changes update very quickly, giving us instant feedback in the Enscape view. So I'll just bring that to life a little bit. I'm just going to open my Revit model and I'm just going to make a change to an element in my Revit model so we can see that change and how quick that change is made within Enscape. So I'm just going to pick this chair here, for example, and I'm just going to switch it out for a alternative. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a different type. Okay, so I've made the change in my model and on the left hand side, you can see that that change has taken effect almost instantly. Okay, so I'll change another element so we can see the noticeable difference there. So for example, I could change the floor and I'll go to edit the structure of the floor so we can see a difference in the floor surface. So I'll go to the structure and change the material for that floor surface. We currently have a wood floor, so I'm just gonna try and switch it out for a different type of wood floor. So I look for oak. Okay, we've got oak flooring, I'll select that. Click OK, just to confirm. OK again. And now that's been confirmed in our Revit model, you'll see okay, that change doesn't take very long to take effect. OK. Great. Another thing I'd like to mention is our ability to move throughout our model and navigate throughout our model. There are two modes of navigation within Enscape. We have Fly mode and we also have Warp mode. As you can see on the top right of our Enscape view, we are currently in fly mode. We can toggle in between warp mode and fly mode by using the spacebar. In warp mode, we have the ability of maneuvering around objects in the model and also being impeded by objects such as walls and furniture, uh, which adds to that realism within the Enscape movement. We can also pass through doorways and walk up and down stairs as well. You'll notice a slight animation when we walk up and down stairs, which also adds to that realistic effect whilst navigating around our model in Enscape. Within fly mode, we have the ability of moving unrestricted through objects such as walls, floors, and any other furniture within our model. The benefits of, of being able to use fly mode are that we can access certain areas of our model and specific areas of the model and create views in areas that we wouldn't otherwise be able to access in warp mode. So we can get the kind of outputs that we would want and the kind of outputs we'd expect in certain areas of our model and still gain the access to those areas. So another useful feature within Enscape is the instructions. So at the bottom of our Enscape view, we currently have some instructions which indicate how we can carry out certain actions within Enscape. 
On the left hand side at the bottom of our screen, we have actions and instructions that, that indicate how we can uh, maneuver around our model. So we can use the W, A, S and D keys in order to move around our model. And we also have the arrow keys on our keyboard, which have the same kind of functionality as well. In order to look around our model, we simply left click on our mouse and move right or to the left, move up or down in order to move around or look around our model. We can also all around certain points in our model. So based on the cursor location, we can orbit around that, that point by moving to the right to move left and moving to the left in order to move right. We can also control the height of that orbit by sliding the mouse up or down. So we have a lot of control over how we can create our views and get the kind of outputs we would want and the kind of outputs we would expect. Okay, as well as being able to manipulate the view and see instant changes made from within our Revit projects, we also have the ability to make uh, short videos or animations. To add a keyframe, we simply click on add keyframe. What we see in each keyframe will be determined by our current location and orientation within our view. The more keyframes we add, the smoother the transition and the more control we have over what we see in this video or animation. So I'm just going to add a few keyframes and then click to preview that video. As you can see, it didn't take much time or effort in order to create this quick video and animation within Enscape. We can make alterations and modifications to our current keyframes simply by clicking an existing keyframe in the timeline. From there, we can make any adjustments and tweak the view and the focal point of the objects within that keyframe. We can also toggle in between keyframes in order to make any additional adjustments to any other keyframes in our animation. So we can have ultimate control over the kind of output we receive from this video in Enscape. So I'm just going to go back to see those changes. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long in order to get the kind of output you'd want um, using the tools to tweak and modify your keyframes. We can also insert additional keyframes by clicking on an existing keyframe and then choosing to insert an additional keyframe in between existing keyframes. We've also got other controls that we can use based on changing the time of day, altering the field of view, and also the depth of field and timestamp. So I'm happy with that additional keyframe that I've just added into the timeline. So I'm going to go back and as you can see, we have an additional keyframe that's been added in to that timeline. So I'm just going to click again to preview that change. And you'll now see that the depth of field has changed for my video based on that change that I made um, in the editor. So I consider the video, video editor to be a very effective tool as it allows us to create videos quickly um, and easily in a very short space of time. Another thing to mention would be our ability to change the time of day within our model. So I'm just going to quickly toggle off the video editor view and I'm just going to change the time of day and we have the ability of changing the time of day by using right click on our mouse and the shift key. This is also highlighted within our Enscape instructions. As you can see, as I change the time of day, shadows and reflectance within our model adjust to show us that realistic appearance of how light would appear in the model based on different times of day um, and different uh, light sources, such as natural lighting and artificial lighting. So if I toggle to nighttime, you'll see that my artificial lighting becomes evident in the model. 